Hello, this is David Wormsley, and I thought I would do a video on tables for Beaver Builder. Now, over the last couple of years, I've seen many requests come in to the Beaver Builder team for them to add a tables module. And also more recently, I've seen similar requests coming in to the add-on packs like Power Pack and Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder. But what many may not be aware of is that this year they did start work on a tables module. And in fact, it was included on their public beaver builder roadmap that's over on Trello as a plugin that was a work in progress but more recently there was a little announcement from Justin their lead developer and I've got a copy of it here on their Facebook page where he was saying that they have shelved this for the moment because they were not coming up with anything that kind of compared with TablePress which is a WordPress repository plugin which is totally free and it might not be shelved for ever but for the moment they are recommending table press so i thought i would take a look at table press and see how it worked on beaver builder and that's what i've done here so i'm just going to walk you through the things that are important to me when i'm choosing a plugin which is its reliability plugin load that speed ease of styling and i'm also particularly with something like tables here i'm looking at responsiveness as well because i know that html tables don't work so well responsively so that's what i'm going to look through here so let's start off by taking a look at their entry on the wordpress repository so here they are and i don't know how you go about evaluating your plugins but i'll give you some indication of what i kind of look at so i go over to this section here i'm interested in the active installs to see if there's many of us might not influence my decision but also looking at when things were last updated i take a look at the support and how many support queries have been coming in and how well they've been covered and then i tend to look in at a few reviews typically i will concentrate on things around the three and four stars because that's where criticism is likely to be quite balanced um, but of course every plugin gets their one star ratings usually by people who just make a crass comment and disappear and that's usually and is the case in this one but it's always interesting to me to see how a plugin author deals with that you know their attitude to really getting a slag off and um tobias is excellent with that yeah really really good but then the other things i'm looking for is to see whether they filled in all of their entries here whether they have a website to go with it and any demos and of course they've got all of that over here the only thing that puts me off a little bit here is the fact that it's just a one author plugin so everything hinges on this one person which is something i tend to avoid but here it looks like a, a pretty good plugin let's just go over to their own page over here now something i don't think you can find on the repository is when a plugin started because i think even though it got the change log there i don't think that's dated but if you come over here you can see by going to their news and looking at the first entry that it was started in 2012 and i do remember tobias here from he actually took on wp table and made that wp table reloaded plugin now that's out of date now because he took what he learned from that and put it into this plugin but i mean that goes back to about 2009 so he's been around a long time looking after plugins so you know a lot of trust factors there so reliability you know that's okay i'm quite happy with adding something like that to my site so i've done that and uh there's quite a lot of things i like about this plugin when you install it you've you should see over here it puts it on the main menu here but i like this i wish more plugins had this you can go over here on the setup and you can decide to sort of stick it somewhere else so something like tables i'm not likely to be using that on every page and it's not likely to be something that i need to look for a lot so i'm going to stick that one under tools and i just do that by doing a quick save and it moves over to here which i quite like about that now here's where you can add some custom css i think that's ticked by default i've unticked it because i'm not going to use it and that leads me on to the next thing about the plugin load so everything's fine about the way that the plugin loads the only thing i don't like when compared with using beaver builder where it only loads what's needed for a particular page this loads some global css so there is a quick way around that and i've got that on my 
example page over here. So the link will be below. If you're not used to my videos, I do these demo sites where you can log in and grab what you like from the front page. So I've included over here what's needed. So if you pop this into your functions PHP in your child theme, this will then stop the default CSS from showing globally. And what I've done to make up for that, because then of course you've lost all of your styling, what I've done is I've gone into the plugin itself, look for the style sheet, and I've added it to this page. So let's go into the page builder. And if I go over to tools and layout CSS, this is just for this page then. And I've added all of his default CSS uh, here. And just for this example, I've added all of the extra CSS that I've added on my extra styling overwriting it is also added in here so you can play around with this if you like live to see what I've done but uh, nothing particularly exciting here so that's that let me just go back to the back end of the plugin I'll just save that there and we'll go into one other thing I quite like about this plugin as well is that it's got this so you can go and add new from here let's just go and add it I won't do it and you get this but you don't need to worry about what you put in here just add the name you can add the description later and you can change your rows and columns as well later so and you know you can move between these tabs so you can constantly stay within this layout without having to go off to the side and find things again so i quite like that about the plugin so it's well thought out and you can also see your ids when you're in it let's let's go into one of the tables i've set up over here so there we are we can see the table id for it. it's already been given so this is the short code to show the table which we're going to place into a module either html module or a text module in the front so that's all we need to do to get this to show i should have shown you that when it was open but i'm sure you can figure out how to add that to a text module okay so here we are and this is how it's laid out it's quite logical we got over here it's very easy to go in here and insert a or add a new row and just keep adding those on and also similarly delete them so that's pretty much how you can do it, it can combine cells over here. These other options here are so you can set whether your first column is the header row. So it will get a tag of table header TH and you can do the same with the footer assign the last one to that. You can put alternating color rows, which I think it's set like that in the first place. And this is where I add a extra CSS class here. I did try adding it to the module itself, but I found it was easier to style if I placed it here. So there's a little tip if you're using this, go and place your extra custom CSS over here. And this last section here deals with JavaScript. Now the JavaScript, unlike the CSS, is only outputted for the pages that it's used on. And I'll return back to this in a minute, but it gives you all of this sort of cool features here, which you can turn off, like adding um, all of this sort and filtering stuff that goes over here, as well as setting how many entries are going to show and being able to put in a search. Let me just do icon. So over here, so it should, did that actually search? Yes, it's got icon there. Yes, it's got all the, the lines with icon on it. It seems like so many, but uh, yeah, they're all the uh, modules that are available for build the builder. Well, maybe not all of them, but uh, the main ones. Okay, so as you can see, I've done some styling over here. So I think I've taken care of plugin load. Let me take a look now at the styling. So I'll go over to my CSS editor. And as I put that in a single page, I know to come over to my layouts page here where it's also displayed. And you'll see, I'm not going to cover too much on this one that it's added these to the bottom of my custom styles here, but it's quite easy to style really, because let's say we want to take, I'm going to isolate this and look at make rules. So on my stylizer, editor stylizer six here, it gives me all of the selectors that are available to me. There's my my custom style here, so I can just isolate that. And now I selected something here, I've selected row three, just for that custom class. I can go to column three, I can insert a rule. Let me just go somewhere here where I can place something, insert a rule. And if I just put a bit of background in, there we are. I've identified this. 
Now, a couple of things that I did notice in uh, the styling, there are a couple of important tags that are used, so maybe some overwriting might be tricky on some elements. You know, I'd rather not see an important tag because they become hard to overrule, but uh, not entirely impossible. Okay, so that's pretty much styling. I don't want to get bogged down with that because you can play around with what I've done. And that's it. Uh, you probably need to style this here because it tends to be see-through on his styling, uh, which I didn't particularly like. So you'll find that there's somewhere in here there is a style that's sorting out that. There, that's the one. So there's one where it's uh, the before and after buttons over here. I needed to put some color on that to show those up. <clears throat> so that's something to look into. Let me just go on now to the responsive element. And I kind of, uh, yeah, let me just show you this now. If I just move in with this now, I've set these up slightly different. What happens is that you can get, all right, that one, as you can see, that's squashing over and it's going out of view. So we have to horizontally scroll with this. But, oh, I haven't set it, have I? Let's have a look. Yeah, there we are. On this top one, I've set it so we've actually got the scroll on the actual table itself. So I shall just show you how to do this because that's the one way to make <clears throat> a table that's not, I mean, you know, up to a certain point, these are fairly responsive like that. But once you get past that point, you maybe want some scroll to come in and you can easily do that by using the JavaScript that's in the back end. So let's just go in here and have a look at this. So if I want this to be on, which one am I in at the moment? Okay, that's all turned on. So I shall go to my second example. Just going to all so we'll leave that. I obviously made some changes. We'll go to yes, the second example. And on this one, I've got everything turned off. But if I just turn this on, and I don't want all of the sort and filtering and search and all that, I just want the horizontal scrolling. So I just make sure that this is switched on and give that a save. I'll go back to this page and give that a refresh. Uh, that's another thing I quite like about it. It's got Ajax saving on there, so you don't need to wait for a page refresh, which is quite nice. So example two now, if I go and squeeze that one in, uh, there we are. There's the scroller. So anyone on mobile then will be able to scroll across there. Now, there are some more fancier options for responsive. He has some if you like premium extensions over here and one of those is responsive tables so you can in now he's very good with this uh, he suggests the amount that you can pay and i think this is a good idea to do this but you could actually download it and not pay it a thing and here are a few options about how this is slightly different from the scroll that we see the scroll that i had doesn't keep this first column uh, in line but if you wanted that with that you would need to download this plugin and what's this one this is oh this is straightforward scroll so that that really effectively happens anyway or you can have something like this where it reveals the information so it's another plugin that you can add and if you do that again you do end up with a global style sheet so once again i've added a little bit of code there so if you're using this responsive tables plugin to get those responsive effects here and you want to get rid of the global css that goes with it you can do the same trick again here and add this bit to functions php in your child theme and that will get rid of it and then you can copy the styles that are in that plugin into your page and do exactly the same so i think i've gone on for some time about table press uh, which i think is a really good plugin uh, it's definitely the one that i will use when i need tables don't use them a lot be interested to see what you think of it and whether you've got any more tips on using it okay that's me done i hope it's useful talk to you soon bye